Hello friends, it's Jennifer Terry and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will talk about the Philippine tourism update. Yes, so we'll both cover domestic tourism and international tourism. Let's start with the domestic tourism. First up would be major tourist attractions in the Philippines have opened. So for example, El Nido and Boracay have opened their borders or doors to all domestic tourists since o October, but they are subject to several guidelines. So tourists of any age are allowed to visit as long as they have no underlying conditions and health risk. What else? The surfing capital of the Philippines, Siargao, have reopened to tourists last November 23. And tourists are subject to follow minimum health and safety standards, including um, the need to provide a negative RT-PCR, negative COVID test result prior to their travel to Siargao. So this has been a new normal thing. Test before travel. And good thing is flights to Siargao have resumed um, last December 1 through the Sayak Airport. What else opened? Coron Palawan has also opened and welcomed local tourists last December one as well. So with its magnificent limestone rock formations and stunning lagoons, they have opened to tourists last December one. And based on the approved guidelines and protocols, anyone residing in the Philippines aged 15 to 65 may enter the island for leisure purposes. And same with other destinations, Tourists are also required to submit a negative RT-PCR COVID test result before arriving on the island. Baguio City, the summer capital of the Philippines, have also re reopened to tourists from all over Luzon. Okay? Take note, all over Luzon. And very recently, uh, the Baguio City government announced that the number of visitors will be increased to 1,000 visitors a day. And Chocolate Hills Tertiaries, well, Buhol will also be reopened. Well, according to Secretary Puyat or the, the Secretary of the Department of Tourism, uh, on the second week of December, uh, they will reopen for independent travelers, small groups, and even solo travelers. Uh, currently, um, Buhol is only open for mice, for meetings, incentives, conferences, and exhibitions. And what else? All the Philippines areas are now allowed to operate at full capacity, and staycation is also allowed uh, for one overnights in GCQ areas. So for GCQ areas for the month of December, I mentioned that in my last vlog. Again, these are the GCQ areas in the Philippines. These areas are, are under more restrictive um, classification than the rest of the country. What else? The Department of Tourism also allowed 7,200 hotels, resorts to operate. No? So they have given the green light to operate under varying quarantine conditions. So it's these hotels, resorts, they need to apply to the Department of Tourism and they need to be accredited so that they can be allowed to operate again. So this is a good thing. The government is really making sure that safety protocols are implemented. So why did they open domestic tourism? Well, the Philippine government believes that domestic travel will lead the recovery of the country's tourism industry, with Filipino travelers expecting to go to destinations closer to home. To cut it short, they opened for economic reasons to save livelihoods, businesses, and jobs. And according to the data of the Department of Tourism, domestic travel spend is significantly higher than inbound travel spend, meaning this is um, used for domestic tourism. Um, hotels in GCQ and in, in MGCQ, so our local travel industry is largely propped up by our fellow Filipinos. Yeah. And according to their data, the tourism official also said that domestic tourism accounts for about 80% to 85% of the total tourism revenue. Now with this goal in mind, economic reasons to push up tourism, the Philippine government is working hard to make arrangements to support 
the revival of domestic tourism the tourism industry and you know make it more attractive and less complicated less costly such that um, the Philippines the Department of Tourism launched a travel app yes another app the so travel app this is called travel Philippines an all-in-one app for traveling in the new normal the great thing about this app is that it has real news updates and articles from the Department of Tourism and government agencies to prevent disinformation and confusion to travelers. So informative updates and then technical improvements will also be constantly um, updated. And it also runs on all devices and browsers. At present, it features uh, six major tourist destinations like Boracay, Palawan, Bohol, um, Ilocos Norte, and Metro Manila. So if you would like to visit the app, you can also visit the website. You don't have to download it straight away. There is a site. I'll put the link here. It's a very short site. Actually, I think we should visit it. How about we have a look at this Travel Philippines app? So let's visit this Travel Philippines app or website. Let's go. So the app is, uh, the website is app.philippines.travel. So this is what it looks like. And as promised, here is the six feature destinations, Cebu, Baguio, Boracay, Palawan, Manila, Bohol, and Ilocos Norte. So let's say you want to visit Boracay. You want to know the travel requirements in Boracay. Let's see, make it bigger. So explore Boracay. We have food and drinks, places to stay, uh, places to stay, see and do, and lifestyle. And let's scroll down. Boracay safety advisory or visiting Boracay. I like this one better. Let's see. Visiting Boracay facts. So as of November 26. So these are the requirements. See what do I need to do or to secure before traveling to Boracay? Oh, it tells you exactly what you need to prepare and it also answers the questions. So upon arriving in Boracay, am I supposed to get another PCR or COVID test? No. And what else is here? There's so much good information, guys. If you're actually traveling to the Philippines or, or you are already in the Philippines and considering of traveling to these feature destinations, this is a good website to look at. Very good website. And you don't even have to download the app if you just want to check the requirements. It's already here. You can open it. I think it's much better if you download the app. Yeah. So this is good. Going on a stay vacation. Staycation. See? If you also want to do a staycation in an accredited hotel, it's also here. Oh, and the list is also here. Wow. Oh. This is great. I might do another a whole video about this site. <laughs> yeah, so I'll just give you a quick idea, guys. So I'll put the link in the description box if you want to check out this website. So that is the Travel Philippines app. Uh, what else is the Philippines doing to support the uh, domestic tourism? Well, apart from that, travel vouchers, affordable RT-PCR tests is also eyed for tourists. So the Department of Tourism is looking at subsidizing about half of the COVID test costs for tourists traveling domestically. In a television interview on Tuesday by the Department of Tourism chief, she said that the agency is eyeing to ink an agreement with the UP, PGH, or the Philippine General Hospital to cut by 50% the RT-PCR test costs. Originally, the price cost is around 1,000 to 800 out to 900 pesos per person. If this happens, if this actually happens, if they cut by 50%, then that would be, I'm not good in math, guys, like 900 pesos. Oh, that's going to be affordable. But this is just, they're just eyeing. So nothing has been finalized about this yet. And what else? So the government is saying that they want people to be able to travel, especially with the Christmas holiday. And the Department of Tourism acknowledges the cost for the COVID test is quite prohibitive, but noted that it is a requirement that cannot be taken out. So safety first, that's their priority. 
So even despite all these efforts by the government, there are still challenges. Now, although Filipinos express a desire to travel as soon as restrictions are lifted, their main concern is still their health and safety. Many said that they would only feel comfortable taking their trips once a reliable COVID vaccine or treatment becomes available and when the situation in the Philippines gets better. So safety and health, health and safety is a number one concern for all travelers. Now, another challenge is domestic travel requirements. Domestic leisure travel, when people think about it, oh, so many requirements, it's so complicated. Different provinces, different travel requirements. There's an app you have to download, there's a form you need to fill up. You know, it, it's one of the hurdles for travelers. So the Department of Tourism expressed that they would want that eventually these travel requirements from local government units in time for reopening that they become unified, you know, be uniformed. Because it's just much easier for travelers. But because this varying travel requirements is complicated. Apart from health and safety and travel requirements complications, many Filipinos lost their jobs or experienced a reduction in their income. So beyond the heightened health and safety risks, the economic repercuss repercussion of the pandemic and the community quarantine restrictions appear to be far-reaching. And in a survey made by the Department of Tourism, which involved uh, more than 12,000 respondents in different provinces in the Philippines, it showed that only 26% of those people expect no redu reduction of their income. It means 74% 74, 74 of those have reduced their income or either lost their income. And you think about these numbers and the effect to the economy. Would people have the money to travel? Well, that's a question. Aside from money concerns, people are concerned about their health. But in their survey, which was done by the Department of Tourism, it is interesting to know that the responses indicate a greater concern for the welfare of others than their personal welfare. Somebody might think, hey, I want to go on a holiday, I want to go on a trip, but then what if I get sick? What if I catch the virus and bring it home to my family? Filipinos are concerned about that. So would they risk the life of the lives of their families to travel? That's a concern. So that's all for domestic tourism, guys. The good thing is that major destinations have opened and that the government is do, doing, doing and planning things to support the industry. Now let's move forward with international tourism. Now, we know that domestic tourism is opening. Does this mean that international tourism will open soon too? Well, the Department of Tourism previously reiterated that they will focus first on the country's revival of domestic tourism with no clear timeline yet as to when foreign leisure tourists will be allowed to visit local destinations. So since, Mar since March, travel to the Philippines is severely restricted. And until now, only, only um, immediate families of Filipinos and former Filipinos and holders of certain long-term visas are allowed. And Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograla stated that the focus will remain on domestic tourism for now and tour international tourism will come later. In his own words, he said that, we are just making sure that everything is in place. Everything is set before we reopen. With regards to international tourism, as I said, let's start first with domestic and then let's see. And then we can slowly reopen international tourism step by step. So that's what the cabinet secretary said. And what else? Domestic tourism, what else? affects the opening of international tourism. So the reopening to international tourists will also depend on the current numbers or the current or the COVID-19 case numbers. If all goes well, the Philippines could move forward, could open select destination for international arrivals. So if 
the domestic tourism works and the COVID cases drops, they could consider international tourism. So at this time, there are no confirmed plans or timelines in place from the Philippines. We don't know yet, so nobody can tell. I get so many questions. Well, when will the Philippines open to tourists? I don't know. But there's some uh, hopes there. We have uh, heard some talks about travel bubble arrangements. So the Philippines eyes travel bubble with some Asian countries, according to the Department of Tourism. So a, a tourism official, Bong Benzon, the DOT undersecretary, said that they might consider or they are doing some preparatory work more or less which destination in Southeast Asia or at least in Asia will be part of the travel bubble program which will most likely involve our resort destinations so hey our neighbors from Asia might be able to visit soon but however he did not say that the Department of Tourism didn't say as to when such program would begin and what countries could be involved. So these are still talks. Now, what if they open? So if the Philippines opens up, would foreign tourists, what would be the challenge on international tourism? The question will be, if they open to foreign tourists, would foreign tourists feel safe going to the Philippines and are there sufficient medical facilities to take care of them if they get sick? Now that's a question. And will COVID vaccinations be acknowledged? Would, would that eliminate the need to quarantine upon arrival? There's so many questions. But we're waiting for the government to give us more information about international tourism. For as of now, this is all I can give you guys and all the words or majority of the, every word I said in this video is taken from a news article. So if you want to go check it out, there's a link, all the links, there's like 20 links in the description box. You can have a read and especially the Travel Philippines app, which is I think a great um, source. You can go check it out as well. And that is all for this video. Um, Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again and don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you got something from this video. If there's any update, I will make a video right away. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again with another update. Bye!